Good afternoon. Episode 420. Yes, 420. Um, dating first or friends first? Why the friend zone is actually better? And I'm actually conflating some ideas to get into one topic from a talk I did last night, but I'm jumping ahead of myself. So before I get started with that, let me start with who I am, what I'm about, why I'm doing these talks, why I'm doing these talks. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert and help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day, I do these talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's topic is one of a series of conversations about love and relationships, about masculine and feminine polarity, about dating, romance, relationship, love, and all the crap that goes with it, <laughs> to be blunt. <laughs> hey, yes, yes, Tracy, gives, gives you hope gives you hope this too, yes. Um, I'm jumping ahead of myself. So, today's topic, sorry. I do this talks every day, as I mentioned, called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's topic is number 420. I've done this for a while. And today's topic actually is a conflation of a couple of other talks that I did last week, but also an event I was at on Tuesday. So, to recap a little bit so you know where I am, I was at a, a speed dating event which I talked about yesterday, which I called mingle dating because it had more effectively, it's more effective to be mingling than speeding, if it makes any sense. And one of the topics we talked about last night, uh, Tuesday night, Tuesday night, was about dating somebody you don't know first or getting to know them as friends first. And I have a position on this, which I shared, and so we speak about it here. Hey, nice to see you, Bonnie. Thank you for being here. Yes, yeah, nice to see you. Nice, nice to be seen. So thank you. Oh, and by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, it was on originally first on Facebook Live, so those people watching me live on Facebook are actually getting to comment and I can respond to them. If you're watching me on YouTube or watching the replay on Facebook, obviously I can't interact with you. So just know that there were comments on the screen on Facebook which you won't see on YouTube. And if you're listening to, on, listening to this on iTunes, you won't even know about it, so skip that part. So, <laughs> so I'm doing my best to repeat the comments and questions posted on the screen in Facebook Live so that people, if you're watching or listening on another platform, you'll actually get to know what I'm talking, who I'm talking to and what I'm talking about. Does that make sense? Okay, back on topic. So, dating first or friends first? Why I believe the friend zone actually is a better way to be. And I actually, I actually saw, a, I saw a talk about it actually, that where it talks about the friend zone, so I'm using that as my own label as well. So, let's jump in. A week ago I talked about, um, I did a topic called, I think it was number 413 if I remember correctly, which, were, which was the, the topic was why can't we be friends and why we can't be friends when it comes to dating. And I got to the point of explaining, and I'm going to come to that, I'm going to hit that from another angle this time about why friendship is more important first. Most um, dating platforms, venues, avenues that are out there are really focused on one thing which is to connect you with somebody. Whether it's a dating app, a dating site, a swipe, smartphone app, or it's a, thank you all the love by the way, I love all the, all, the, all the hearts coming up on the screen, thank you so much. Um, the apps are focused on very, very, very narrow band of attributes. You know, it's like eligibility type stuff for the man and the woman. And of course there's the whole thing in this conversation that this is based upon integrity because there are many people using these apps that aren't being integrity and they make stuff up. I thought it was you. <laughs> I bet you could see my broadcast, yes. I'm glad, I'm glad you like. Um, and the challenge is that when you meet somebody through that narrow bandwidth, and we use this metaphor because it seems to line up more and more, the dating app is focusing on one like, like level of connection. Whereas friendship has a much bigger spectrum, much, much more widespread connection, so yes. Yes, I know it's all you with all the love. I can still answer by being on the screen, so thank you, Betty. I appreciate that. That narrow bandwidth of romance-centric, dating applicability, eligibility requirements, I'm putting one on one little avenue, is like looking at somebody, well, uh, no, that's a bad analogy, I won't use that one. Um, oh yes, your love is your best friend too? Your best friend first? Absolutely. See, you are, a, you are an example of what I'm talking about, so thank you for, for telling me that. <laughs> so here's the thing. Relationships, I believe, cannot function fully, effectively, long term when the only criteria is the um, eligibility, dating, matchmaking, 
data. That frankly, that to be in a healthy relationship of any parent, actually, let's let's skip, let's let's let's, let's um, expand this to include all connections. Friendship is a very powerful part of any relationship. So, so let's bring back into the relationship romantic part of the conversation. For those of us in the dating arena, those of us who are not in a relationship, it's challenging to meet somebody when all you're looking at is the dating facts, as it were, the criteria that is really, frankly, um, limited, as I mentioned. So let me let me let me get some of my angles. I'm I'm getting off track a little bit. So again, the dating, matchmaking, compatibility, relationship-centric stuff is a narrow bandwidth of connection, and through that you can meet somebody, and that's great. However, again, when you're in a relationship with somebody, that information is going to be incomplete. It's like, um, I'm trying to think of a good analogy. It's like learning to drive a car when all you have is information about how to unlock the car door. It's incomplete. It gets you in the car, but it doesn't get you where you want to go. And that is probably, that's a pretty good analogy, about how relationships are so incomplete when you just go in with the dating of matchmaking. Now. Some people will argue, and I won't argue with them. I won't argue with them in this case, is that you get to meet somebody from a dating, chemistry, attraction, sexuality point initially, and then as time goes by, the friendship blossoms. That is true. It can happen. Can happen. However, most people's chemical attraction doesn't last long enough for the friendship to fully expand. Yes, I said that. <laughs> It's a, pl it's a painful place to be because for many people they think, well, I fall in love with my soulmate, it'd be perfect and wonderful. And in some cases, yes, there is an absolute um, opening into friendship and communion and partnership and all these different things that people love to have and it works beautifully. However, for the majority of people, not so much. And this is the challenge that a lot of people face is that they think they'll have it every time. They go, out, they go out to a dating app or meet somebody through a website or a smartphone app and they think they're gonna meet the, the, the love of their life. Now yes, some people have met their partner they got married to through Tinder or Match or one of these other apps. But the odds are against it. And I'm a firm believer that if you wanna be in a relationship, and as Petty said in the comments, that she's in a relationship with her best friend and I believe that if you want to have an amazing relationship, the, the primary focus initially is to connect. It's to get to know the person's heart, because here's the thing. There are many relationships out there that are running still and ones that have ended, where the dysfunction, the suffering, the wounding that happened was a clear understanding there was no friendship there to start with. And I was talking about this when I was talking on Tuesday with these other participants of this event. That, and if you want to know about that event, watch yesterday's broadcast. I explained about it and talked about where it went and what it was about. But anyway, in the conversation, I said the challenge is when you meet somebody, is you're in a relationship with somebody because you met them through matchmaking, that bandwidth. So when the relationship ends, there's nothing left. There's nothing there. So the relationship could be actually very um, incomplete because there's no chance to explore, to really blossom and grow into a truly rich, expansive, inclusive friendship. And it's that level we get to know somebody because there are friends, I'm sure you have this too. I've had people who are friends in my life that after a period of time, the friendship waned because there was nothing else to go on. There was no depth there that continues. It wasn't a continuous friendship. It was an incomplete plane. So, sorry Karen, great topic here. It's always been tricky for me because it, I didn't, I don't feel attracted immediately. I feel like I never feel attracted. This is the thing, Karen. It's not a bad thing. It's, it's a thing, thing. It's not, it's not a bad place to be in as long as you choose to make friendships with those people you're interested in. Because the thing is, ideally, why don't I say this way? Let's start with like. <laughs> Let's start with like, it's easier. You'll meet, you can meet somebody that you like a lot and have connection to. There may not be chemistry, there may not be attraction, there may not be desire to want to jump their bones or any that sort of stuff. But you like them and you get to enjoy expanding the heart connection and the intimacy and the friendship. And at some point in time, you suddenly go, whoa, they're attractive. That can happen. In fact, that's probably one of the best ways it can happen in a way because the attraction is not the first thing on the list. It's the last thing on the list, which is actually easier and more effective way to have a healthy long-term 
immersive, rich relationship. At least that's my belief. Now again, I'm speaking from my. I'm, I don't. I, I even I've written a book. I'm not the authority. I'm an authority. Let me be clear about that. <laughs> I know lots of stuff, and having watched a lot of relationships and been in quite a few and studied this stuff for over 30 years, I've gotten my own flavour. That's why I've got 420 broadcasts under my belt. And I believe firmly, from my point of view, that if you want an amazing relationship, it must include and ideally begin with real friendship. That's my um, pulpit or my my soapbox to talk about that piece. And really to explain another angle about why I think it's so important is because so many times relationships can end because of a trauma or a challenge where the partnership falls apart because of a car accident or a financial challenge or another um, discord. And because there isn't any friendship underneath that, that initial attraction, people desert each other. And there are so many people I know who've been in relationships that ended because they were, they, they, got, they got ill or they had to take care of a parent or they had a financial um, challenge in their work and the other person deserted them because there was no friendship there. This is why I firmly believe that friendship is a vital if not the most important thing in a healthy relationship. To be with your best friend in love and life for me is what real, not sorry soulmates, I'm not a big fan of the word soulmate, but real partnership is about that authentic twin flame, that desired connection of intimacy, of um, unity and a real love that isn't about love because the sex is good, it's about love because the connection is great. And so when something happens, because things do happen in life, you'll actually be, um, or someone, genus, or someone moves away. Let me elaborate a bit more on that one. Oh, sorry, yes. As it, it, let me put that in, thank you. <laughs> if you are meeting somebody through the romantic avenues, you haven't met them as a friend first, if that person moves away, it's hard to maintain. You can do long distance relationships to a degree, but again, the odds are against you. It's not a very easy path to follow. But again, if the friendship has been built first, the platform, the um, support structure, the container from which everything grows out, then if something happens, a trauma, a challenge, a tragedy, whatever those things are, it's easier to stay and to have support from your partner, which frankly, if you're in a really amazing relationship, I would like to think what you want in that relationship is where through thick and thin. You know, necessarily till death to us part, that's another conversation I had a few weeks ago about that. But through the good times and the bad, that you'll stay together because you care about each other and you value each other beyond how good the sex is. Because sex needs to be good as well, let's be clear. But it's not the only thing. And if you're gonna meet together for a long time, sorry, got scratched. Um, if you're gonna be together for a long time, then your sex life will evolve. And if you go for a very long time, it may actually become more challenging, but that's not, but that's planning way ahead. Again, friendship is what really brings a relationship together. It really, for me, is the undergirding what makes a relationship possible if you wanna go beyond just having fun in bed. And I think most people watching my videos, and I include myself in this conversation, that that's important, to have somebody to play with and enjoy the experience of being around not just in bed. <laughs> I mean, sex can be part of everything in terms of the connection, the intimacy, the playfulness, the flirtatiousness, the foreplay and everything else. But I think it, it works better when it's, again, undergirded by friendship. And so, as you may have guessed by my broadcast, I'm a big fan, friendship first, romance second. Right, um, just seeing anything else I want to put on that because that's really the, the distillation of my message. I talked about this again a week ago. I talked about why we can't be friends, why we can be friends in dating and speaking about that as a teaching about why the romantic, um, or should say the chemistry level is a limited part to play on unless you go much deeper and connect to who you really are. And this is a PS for that or a conflation of two other topics because this is on my mind today. Um, and again, this was a talk, I, this was from a conversation I had on Tuesday at this event, which was a um, speed dating, I call it mingle dating, meet up for people, it was a cooking lesson, exploration, it's actually kind of fun. But some really cool conversations happened there as well. So this is my debrief from that. Um, I think that's it. Anything else I want to say on this? Any questions or thoughts? If you have any questions, by the way, and watch your live with me, you can definitely post them on the screen. And if I catch them before I, if I catch them, I'll respond to them. Um, before I get, before I 
if you do have any, I'll just jump ahead and say, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day. These are called Messages to the Masculine, just by the Feminine Heart. This is number 420. You can watch this in replay on Facebook on my business page, which is barryselby.author. Basically, on my personal page too, but on my business page, they're all collected together because there's less other stuff there. They also will show up on my YouTube channel, which you may be watching this now, um, which is, um, sorry, my channel is Barry Selby, the, the you're welcome, welcome Karen. Um, YouTube channel, Barry Selby, playlist, Messages from the Masculine. Also, I'm now putting this on my podcast on iTunes, do a search for Messages from the Masculine. And I'm glad you like this, I'm glad this has helped you. If you are someone who's looking for love in all the wrong places and you want some real help, get some. <laughs> I reckon my services are very biased. If you go to my website, which is barryselby.com, you can check out all my stuff on my website. I do have places on there for the video blog, which is where these live. And if you go to the left-hand side of the menu and click on Let's Chat, you can sign up for a complimentary discovery session. Book a session, get some help, get some clarity, and I'll help you get where you want to go. That, I think, is everything. I think there's any homework on that. I usually give homework out, but in the last few days I haven't had any except for yesterday. So if I give any homework, it'll be simply to... Well, here's, here, here's an idea for an assignment, just because I'm not giving you homework. <laughs> Your work in me can be fun. Um, if you are someone who's had some challenges in the past, you may want to do some review of your past relationships and look where the friendship was or wasn't, where it was sex only, where it was the chemistry only, and not the true depth of um, connection and romance and relationship that can happen beyond that, which is friendship. You're welcome, Gina. Glad you like the topic. It's, it's come up a couple of times. As I mentioned last week, I talked about this in a different flavor about friendship. That was number 413, if you want to watch that one. Um, and glad you could help you this time. I think that's it. Um, give your homework. Tomorrow will be number 421. I do these every day, by the way, at 5 p.m. Pacific time. That's my commitment so far. I've managed to get that pretty much all the time. Unless something changes, I'll let you know if that happens. Um, so join, join me again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time, Facebook Live. Thanks for being with me as always. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care.